very, very often people tend to think about fine volume method about some very, very intuitive interpolation onto the phases, etc. Well, in most cases, it works. To be honest, fine volume method does not have a, does not have very strong mathematical motivations or arguments underneath, uh, like the, for example, the the theory and the proofs of con convergence for fine element method are way, way better developed than than for fine volumes. Fine volumes are very often like you know recipes how to bake a cake, um, but the, but one thing that you should be absolutely aware of is how not to compute diffusive fluxes if you've got uh, non-constant diffusivities. Uh, now the problem is, the problem that I want to address is the following. Imagine that we have two different materials where we've got lambda low and lambda high. You can associate it with having two different materials of different conductivities. Uh, you might have many, many, many cells in your mesh, but somewhere you've got the interval between two between two, um, two materials, and you've got two neighboring fine volumes. Uh, or you might have just the whole um, field of, of variable conductivity that changes everywhere in the domain. So you've got maybe small differences between the cells, but you have, but you have lambda differences between each pair of cells. Uh, so, and, okay, let's have the centroids once again. Mm. And we said that how would you calculate the diffusive flux between one and two? Well, generally, for constant lambda, you would do lambda times u2 times u1 divided by, divided by distance multiplied by um, surface area of the face. What would you do intuitively if you know that lambda varies? Smart idea, isn't it? Maybe yes, maybe no. The distance is the same. Can we use? I think yeah. it should be the, uh, is the harmonic or uh, yeah. Yeah, like we, we will. Sh I will show it in a minute. Like right now, remember, never do that. <laughs> is this most stupid way of calculating the diffusivity, and it will be wrong. Uh, sounds good, doesn't work, exactly. Uh, it will be the most stupid way of cal calculating the diffusivity. Probably for small changes in the diffusivity and very, very smooth functions, maybe it will even converge and you will not see much discrepancy for, from, the, from the correct result, maybe. Uh, okay, so for example, when we've got like turbulence viscosity, like this approximation would work or? I don't know, better not to do that. Better not to do that because, because why? Uh, I want to, uh, I want to well, create your intuition to that based on the heat transfer in two materials of uh, of different conductivities. Uh, okay, it's lambda low, so to conduct a given heat flux, you would need to have a pretty high gradient, 
and in lambda high, it's much easier to conduct uh, a small temperature gradient would lead to the same uh, conductive heat flux. Uh, and let's use this, um, let's use this, this example. Mm, so how would you compute the heat flux for that boundary or for that interface? Uh, looking from the perspective of the first cell or from the first material. You would say that Q1 is equal to lambda low times temperature at the interface, or let it be U, at the face, minus U1 at my centroid, divided by delta X half, meaning that delta X is the size of the cell. Right? Well, okay, times A. And then I think you need to add a minus before. Yeah, that's right. I just want to calculate the magnitude, okay? Uh, what would it be from the perspective of the other cell? Q2 is lambda high times uh, mm -hmm, uh, times U2 minus U phase divided by delta X half times A. And as we said, the find volume method is the method that is conservative when it comes to the scheme. So exactly Q1, Q1 and Q2 should be exactly the same. And if we, if we do not fulfill this condition, we have basically destroyed the scheme and we have destroyed the conservativeness of the scheme. So if you implement something that is not conservative anymore, uh, then you will be generating energy or you will be losing energy or maybe you will be generating mass or losing mass in your scheme depending on what kind of equation you're solving. So, so let's take this and how would you, that's something that is, let's say, physics based and, and heat transfer based. How would you approximate the diffusive flux between two neighboring cells. You'd, you'd want to represent it by saying that, okay, if we are not taking just half of the cell. We want to take our value and the neighboring value. So what we would like to have is uh, so we do not want to use the half of the cell and half of the cell. We want to use our value and the neighboring value. Uh, so we would like to have something like lambda resultant or averaged or whatever times, uh, times U2 in the neighboring cell minus U1 at my cell divided by delta X times surface area of the face, right? Now the good question is how should we calculate resultant value of the conductivity to, to have the conservative scheme? So let's see. Um, we know that this and this need to be exactly the same. So we can equalize them. And then what we can calculate is, uh, or maybe even smarter, we actually, we could calculate UF out of these two equations, uh, but we don't need to have UF. Uh, let me write some, the following. Let's, let's take, um, Uf minus u1 equals equals q 
one um, sorry q1 uh, delta x no. yes okay uh, you can rescale one of the q's so uh, uh, so multiply it by, for example, the Q1 multiply by the lambda high. Uh, okay, ju just one. okay, just check if I'm right. Okay, uh, U F minus U1 equals Q times delta x divided by a divided by lambda low and divided by two. Okay, uh, then let's take this one. Let's see, u2 minus uf equals q2 times lambda, uh, delta x divided by 2a lambda high. Hmm? Okay, and we know that q1 is equal to q2, and we wish it to be equal to q that we want to mimic with our... Uh, averaged diffusivity. So, let me, uh, let me write the following. Namely, first of all, let me write that u2 minus u1 equals uh, q times delta x divided by not by 2, divided by A, lambda R. Right? Okay, and obviously, U2 minus, U2 minus U1 is the same as U2 minus UF plus UF minus U1. So we know that Q delta x divided by a lambda r equals well, q delta x to a lambda low plus q delta x to a uh, lambda high. Once again, magic, magic. Oh, sorry, not there. Too much magic. Um, and the final result is that 1 divided by lambda r equals 1 half 1 divided by lambda low plus 1 divided by lambda high. Is the harmonic average or well, is it harmonic average or half of the harmonic average? Anyway, like certainly it's not arithmetic average. Uh, and to be honest, it doesn't have anything to do with the distance between the cells. Uh, keep that in mind because even for variable coefficients, this one should be applied. This is extremely important. And it, it's even twice more important for materials where you've got the interface between two materials. If you don't apply that in fine volume method, you will, you will even not destroy the conservativeness of the scheme. Actually, you will probably end up with, with wrong results where you generate mass energy or something like that, generate or use uh, or lose. So, so just bear that in mind. Questions? When, like, uh, no wonder if you got, we can check if it's okay. Let's assume that we've got conductivity of one and one, and one plus one is two. Half means that resultant lambda is also one, so it, it looks fine. 